How do you all do it yourself for RV repair guys? Today I'm going to show you how to repack your bearings. This is a horse trailer. It's got some really big axles on it um, with really big Dexter brakes. I'm going to flip this around here so you guys can see it. So we've already got the wheel removed. You take the cotter pin which goes through this hole out, remove this nut, there'll be a washer that goes there and you want to keep that stuff clean and safe, just like that. Okay, then uh, you can pull your wheel off. See, we pulled the wheel off with the wheel still connected, which makes the job a little bit of a muscle man job because it's really heavy, but it saves you the step of having to take the uh, tire off, which the only reason we did that is because we didn't have power at first, but we have the generator running now. But I had to get that generator running, so we just went ahead and did it this way. It does save a little bit of time if you've got the strength to be able to put that wheel back on and off with that drum. So, you, so we already have that bearing installed, re-greased, and a new seal put in. This is your seal, and uh, you just tap those in with a hammer, which we'll show you um, later in the video. But uh, one of the things that a lot of people overlook when they're doing the brakes, these brakes are in good shape. You can see they got good pad here and um, the magnet is in good shape. And the way this works is that the electric brakes uh, make this magnetized and they, it goes and hits this outside metal part of the wheel. And that in turn, pushes that and you can see how the brakes they open and they and they, they stop the trailer so that's how it works but see that movement right there there's grease spots here here and down here I'm gonna kind of show you I already greased this one you can see that's got a little grease there you can't really see it here but there's supposed to be some grease here in the center and a little grease there you don't want enough I when I do it is I put it on and then where I can see it can you, my lovely assistant, lovely and gracious Polly Christine. So I'll clean it off. I haven't done the other side. I'm going to hand the camera off to, uh, to Polly and uh, she's going to, I put it up here too. There's a lot of movement within these, but without actually taking the pads and everything off, you can't grease everywhere that it really needs grease. It should actually have a little grease in here and here. Just a thin, thin little bit, but it needs to have some just to help the movement of the brake. Um, and then the other thing that I like to do when I have this apart is this is the adjuster that adjusts the brakes. And these are not self-adjusting brakes. So periodically you gotta come in here and take this cover off the back side of this and open this up. You want to have a flashlight in there so you can see these threads. And what you want to see is those threads getting larger. And what you'll do is you'll jack up the trailer and spin the tire. And you want to spin it just so that you can kind of hear. Can you hold this tire, babe, so I can kind of demonstrate to them what it should sound like? If they can hear it. I got this tire hanging out. So this one's been adjusted. Can you hear that? It's kind of dragging just a little bit. That's what you want to hear. You want to hear those those brakes just slightly grabbing, even though the wheel you don't want the wheel to not turn, but you do want to be able to hear those kind of just scuffing just a little bit. That's uh that's a really properly adjusted brake. And uh, when you go to adjust your controller in your truck, you're going to notice that the brakes work a lot better. You might have to turn it down after you adjust these correctly. So. That's just things. So I'm going to hand the camera off here to Polly, and I'm going to show you how I adjust these before I put the wheel back on. If I can find my channel locks are right here. I got a fused right knee. So usually a tool will go right there, and I'll be looking all over for it. I, I can't bend that knee, and that's where tools like to go and hide from me. So I just adjust my... My channel locks down just about to there and then uh, you want to turn this 
And again, just watch your threads here. You want to see them opening up, not closing. Those actually might be closing. I might be going the wrong way. No, it's getting bigger. Okay. So I go about a turn and a half. If I need more, once I get the wheel put on, then I can come from the backside and use a brake adjuster to get what the last part that I need. But usually that's good. And then you want to just kind of make sure that they're all settled in so that it's nice and um, it's nice and set where it's supposed to be so that the wheel will go on because if these are open a little bit it might make, make it hard to put your drum and wheel back on so i just put a little grease on the end of a screwdriver like this and i grease those points that i was telling you about and i'll use a another screwdriver just to pull it back a little bit so that i can get it in on that that grease point right there But it's just like that. And then a little bit right here. You can actually see it better from the inside. I can get my screwdriver in there. It doesn't need a lot, just a, just a dab. To be honest with you, Anything is better than nothing because I think this step gets skipped almost any time somebody does breaks. It's, it's, it's an extra step that a lot of people don't take. That we, we, we're, we, we, I train all my guys to do it this way. It's just, it's doing it right. It's doing the job right. One thing he didn't say that he was teaching me before we um, started recording is that they're under the brake pads right here, there's little notches, and those notches will indicate where you actually have your contact spot. Right there, right there, so and right there. there. on the back side, you're wanting to put your oil or your grease. Right? Yeah, you don't put it on the front side. You don't want any grease on this front side. You want to keep this dry, your shoes dry, and that's why I, uh, I wipe away all the excess grease, because you don't want that grease to uh, get down onto your on your brake shoes. Okay, so now we're going to pause the video and when we get over to the other side, we'll um, pick the video back up so we can actually show you, show you how we 